I think pe people come with preconceptions, and it's hard, it's hard to let those go for anybody. You know, you, you, know, you think you know what something's going to look like, and then if it doesn't match that, it kind of sets up this um, disturbance in people. They wonder why, why glass? If you're not using that transparency, why would you do it in glass? I think it was a, a real transition from clay into glass. And, you know, with the clay, I was, you didn't have that ability to be transparent, so it's not something that ever came to me. And, and I think when I switched into glass, I kind of brought that clayness with me. Because of it being opaque, you, you have to look at the form as a profile and a volume. You can't see through the form to the other side. You have to look around the piece. You can't look through the piece. So it changes when you're moving around. To me, that becomes more three-dimensional than a glass that basically you can see the other side from one side. A lot of glass surfaces, uh, you know, you walk up to and you can see yourself in them. Or you see the lights from the gallery. And to me, it kind of makes you want to stand back. In, in these pieces, it's almost as if the blackness, it's like drawing you closer to it. It makes you want to almost dive into it with the light. I just love that ability for that glass surface to be another surface. I mean, it, it's glass, but it looks like wood in my case. It looks like skin. The glass just does a beautiful thing in that way. Here's a material that fills a void with your breath and takes on the texture of the inside of that surface. It'll take every nook and cranny of, uh, of that wood mold. You blow a little bit in the mold and if you see you need to blow more, you just do it. It gives you that ability to, to really look at the material and really assess what you're doing and where you're going with it. Glass does something different. To me, it gives me that immediacy and that feedback that's almost instantaneous. I really love that spontaneous quality. To me, there's always this feeling that if you went right to the edge of your ability, then something, something came through with that. It's almost uh, they, they register part of the struggle to make them, which is part of why I love them, that they, they seem sort of out of control. And although over the years I've become better and better at controlling them, I still have kind of kept this quality of out of control with them. To me, so much of glass, and there's nothing wrong with this, but people really want to control it. They really want to tool it. And then they really want to show that they have command over this material. And that's fine. It's just not anything I'm interested in. I'm much more interested in the glass almost controlling me. Everything's on fire, everything's smoky, everything's crazy, everything's quick. And then you take what you've made in that process and you bring it back to the studio and it still has that quality to it. It still has that kind of craziness to it because it shows exactly what you did in the process. It's like, here's how I was made. There's a, a discussion that comes up about my work and it's about the idea of beauty and what is, quote, beautiful. I could make pretty vessels, 
but I'm not interested in pretty. That's nothing that I'm even curious about. I always think of the Japanese uh, tea balls and how they are kind of rough and coarse and gnarled, yet the Japanese think that's beautiful. And I think that's beautiful. There's kind of this rough quality that's uh, maybe you're a little scared of it. You know, what is this? I don't understand this. To me, that's always been the source of beauty for me. I've always considered the idea of the vessel as kind of a metaphor more than the vessel as a utilitarian object. But I've been thinking more and more about even taking away that, that vessel quality. And it really came to a head when I was an artist in residence in Tacoma at the museum. And the team was making my work for a couple of days. And we started from where I was and what I was making. And the first couple of days, they really couldn't get the forms right. So it was really something I'm, I was thinking about and leaning towards. And then I got kind of pushed by this inability of, of the group to kind of do exactly what I wanted, which was perfect because I didn't really want to do exactly what I wanted. It made such a difference of being sort of outside the process and watching the process. I mean, my forms are so big and so hard to make that when there's just a couple people working on them, it's all we can do is kind of just get them made. What was so great about Tacoma was to be outside of the work and see it happening. It's much more a sculptural way of working. I have always loved the thought of the continuum of prehistoric hands to mine, making the ordinary extraordinary. I began by making forms that literally held material. In later years, forms lost their connection with function. By using hollowed out walnut trees as molds, holding the force of my breath, I am infusing nature that has lost its life with life anew. never seen the material as being the subject. The material's been a way of getting to the subject. The subject is me. This is the way I work. This is natural. This is how I take a material and use it to express me.